Well, we know that the FBI showed up this morning on boats at around 10.30 in the morning, a team searching his island. The sudden FBI raid at the Epstein House raised more questions than answers. The area was covered in a web of lies and secrecy that left the entire world in a state of utter shock and disbelief. Can a person go to such lengths merely for the sake of personal gratification? His involvement was not the only thing that was shocking. Several names of many popular and influential personalities popped up during trials and investigations that shook the entire world to its core. The raid exposed the millionaire for his heinous crimes within days and discarded the positive impression he had entailed over the world. Let's uncover all those horrifying mysteries that were revealed during the FBI raids at the Epstein House and his islands. What caused the FBI raid? Could you please give us your name? Jeffrey Epstein. The massively famous millionaire of America, Jeffrey Epstein was suddenly arrested at New Jersey airport for sex trafficking charges. The news traveled far and wide, flashing all over the TV screens in each house. People came forward and called out the millionaire for his violent acts on every channel of communication. The accusation on the millionaire made the people wonder about his involvement and the severity of his crimes. People were filled with unanswered questions and suspicions of their own. But the scene was not quite clear. What, how, and when the crime was happening? Soon after his arrest, the FBI raided his mansion. The passers-by and his neighbors were astonished to find 20 FBI officers trying to get the door lock of Epstein's house to prop open. It took them 15 minutes and a lot of tools, but the officers eventually forced themselves inside. But what they discovered was horrifying. It led them to uncover terrifying truths behind the influential personality of Jeffrey Epstein. The house hosted a safe, with hundreds of CDs labeled with inappropriate titles. The officers also found thousands of graphic images of underage girls and a large stash of videos with underage children in them. There was also a massage room inside the house that was being used for horrifying crimes. It was exactly how the victims had described it. There were many documents labeling the contact details and names of hundreds of victims. A large log of call records was also discovered between his agents and victims. Apparently, Epstein's agents were in a continuous conversation with the victims during the charged period. Most of the pictures in the house were of underage girls. One victim's counsel came forward and revealed that the picture taken was when the girl was underage, about 15 years ago. That is a shockingly massive amount of time for a crime to remain hidden. But this is not even half of the sickening crimes that were disclosed. Epstein was arrested and was taken to court with a non-guilty plea. He was charged with two counts of sex trafficking and was expected to have a sentence of 45 years in prison. There were many victims that had come forward and gave their statements to the court after Epstein was arrested for his violent crimes. But all of these allegations and investigations did not prompt the authorities to look into a much more obvious crime scene, the little St. James Island. I'm just not going to say anything because that's what he told me to do. This particular island was so evident of its crimes that it came to be known as the pedophile island. Yet the authorities paid no attention to it until much later when Epstein was found unresponsive. Epstein was in his jail cell when he allegedly ended his life. The guards found him kneeling with a bedsheet wrapped tightly around his neck. Apparently, he had been dead for two hours before the guards found him. Another shocking revelation was that the guards who were assigned on duty to keep a check on Epstein had falsified their reports on the day he died. They were supposed to check in after every 30 minutes, but they fell asleep on the watch. Even the cameras that were working fine on most days stopped working and could not capture Epstein's suicide. They weren't checking in on Epstein and they took him off suicide watch. Why? There are still speculations that Epstein is alive and that it was all a ruse to escape the court proceedings. Others suggest that Epstein had been ended through a planned setup. 
His defense lawyer claimed the same, but the theories remain a mystery, with only hundreds of questions and no answers. After his death, the FBI officers were faced with a new dilemma. The investigation would run dry. But to seek justice for the victims, the FBI officers finally realized that Little St. James Island would have to be raided. The world had not recovered from the shock of Epstein's death or of his crimes when multiple revelations were made during the raid. It revealed so many horrors that even the officers were left with chilling goosebumps. The raid gave a tiny glimpse into the horrifying influential network Epstein had built and the evil it had wrecked on hundreds of victims. Let's see what the second raid unveiled on the popular American financier and millionaire's property. Fear was about to turn very grim. The employees were in their golf carts running around the island to get work done when suddenly a group of FBI officers came swarming in to get to the roots of the Epstein case. The workers had been expecting the raid for some time, but to have it happen after a month after his arrest was unusual to them and to the world too. But the FBI was determined to uncover all the dark truths of the frighteningly massive trafficking ring that ran within the vicinity of the island. What they found was very disturbing and revealed the horrors of the elite personalities. The master bedroom, Epstein's office, and even the gymnasium were covered in inappropriate photos of hundreds of underage girls. The amount of graphical evidence found was extremely livid. They served as the constant reminder that thousands of such crimes had taken place without anyone knowing within these very walls. And all of it happened, hidden from the common man, in the confines of a private island. What is more horrifying is the fact that the FBI unearthed a hidden room with a secret entrance underground. There were many intertwined pathways on the island. Some of them ran from the kitchen to the master bedroom, while another was at the back of the house to bring in the victims. Some theories suggest that Epstein would use his helicopter to bring the victims inside the mansion through the back door. The master bedroom would then become a memoir for some of the most horrific crimes and sufferings of dozens of victims. Was this all a big secret? Is this the reason why no one would know of the intensity of Epstein's crimes? But there was another path apart from the back door of the mansion that was much more sinister. It ran underground and led to a chamber that was hidden from passers-bys and from public view. Present at the other corner of the island, nobody could spot the entrance until they prodded the land with investigative tools. What the chamber held were rooms filled with horrors and shadows of the excruciatingly shocking crimes that nobody could have predicted. The FBI officers slowly made their way down the path and knew the chamber would reveal to them something so terrifying that they would never forget. The chamber was illuminated by a very dim light, so the visibility was low. But it was not enough to hide the heinous crimes that had occurred within the walls of those chambers. Multiple photographs of influential personalities engaging in unspeakable acts and their sickening, arrogant faces flashed before the officers. It was a troubling sight to see buried here underground. Another strange discovery was that there was an underground network of tunnels that connected the chamber with the main property. Multiple other tunnels were present, and they all helped the residents travel to the main house. Perhaps they were used for more sinister purposes as well, moving around the elites and the victims quickly across the island. The years-long crimes happened, hidden from the public eye, but the FBI raid exposed them all in one day. The frightening thing is that the crimes were happening in broad daylight and nobody batted an eye. Did the workers even know what was really going on here as they worked away on the island? Did they not see the young girls and the terrifying photos pasted on every nook and corner of the house? A couple of employees did come forward to reveal the secrets they had kept. One such example is Steve Scully, who was appointed as an IT worker at the island. 
He says he often saw young girls roaming around the house and many topless photos of girls hanging at various locations on the island. Most of them would be in his bedroom and gymnasium, which was later confirmed in the FBI raids and other statements of the witnesses. Scully did not know if they were underage, but they looked young to him. A butler on Epstein Island also had a disturbing piece of news to give to the media. He explains how he had interacted with a young girl, about 15 years of age, when he was working at the island. The girl from Sweden was heavily distressed and visibly shaken. Apparently, Epstein and his fellow in the same trafficking ring had brought her to the island and confiscated her passport. She was ordered to engage in inappropriate acts with Epstein and his friend and was being threatened if she did not comply. I was only 17. I was the perfect victim. Another employee said that Epstein's office was off limits to all workers. Nobody could go in except the maid who did occasional cleaning of the house. The room would be locked and have restricted access. Some witnesses claim that all the arrangements and meetings with popular personalities were held here. Many of the victims were brought here too with the fake impressions of professional meetings. Before the victims could figure out what was wrong, they were either coerced or threatened into doing other heinous acts. The raid later revealed that the office had a safe where a huge pile of disturbing graphical evidence was present. But why did the workers not come forward when they saw strange things happening around them? That is a strange story too. The workers were often told to mind their own business and keep their heads low while doing their jobs on the island. Plus, they had signed contracts that forbade them to talk about their experiences and work on the island. So, there were little to no statements that came from the employees of the Epstein state. How did Epstein find his victims? But a big question that loomed over the heads of the officers was how a large number of victims were trapped by the millionaire. The island did not have an accessible entrance. So how were the victims recruited? It is an interesting question that has answers you would not want to listen. But let's first check out the island's architecture and design to understand how much effort was made to keep the wrongdoings a secret. When talking about the two islands under the ownership of Jeffrey Epstein, the locals had very clear views and opinions about it. They knew that something suspicious was happening within the islands. Some of them even called out the island as the pedophile island like it was no big deal. If the locals knew about it, why didn't the authorities? That is strange, isn't it? Another weird thing was the fact that the locals saw the drastic changes that the islands went through after Epstein bought them. The biggest red flag of the whole structure was the efforts and money being put in to hide the islands from public view. Tall coconut trees were put up that each cost around a whopping $20,000. That is a huge stack of money just to go through the trouble of hiding the house. The whole island is covered with trees that make it almost impossible for the boats and divers to get a peek into the mansion. Plus, whenever a local or a swimmer would go too close to the island, the guards would usher him away. The secrecy surrounding the islands did leave a questioning doubt running through the minds of the locals. But then again, Epstein was a millionaire, and rich people tend to do weird things with their money. It is nothing compared to what Epstein chose to do with his pile of gold. The whole island would often have guards at every nook and corner. If it was so hard to get inside the island, imagine the poor victims who had no route of escape. There was a story of a 15-year-old victim who had tried to swim in the shark-infested ocean just to escape her torturers. The problem was that it was an island with a single building. There were no police stations and nobody on the girl's side who could help them out with the escape. Plus, there are reports that Epstein kept a gun besides his bed. Even if the victims did manage to escape the mansion and the horrible acts of crime, the island in the middle of the sea proved to be a big hurdle between them and safety. Then, how were the victims brought to the island? 
It was not through the usual sea route on the local boats. Instead, all the girls were transported to the island on a helicopter. Even the celebrities and politicians came on a helicopter that would hide the identities of the victims and the tyrants. So you can imagine the discretion with which these crimes were organized. Everything was planned to the smallest of bits, so no one would bat an eye to the deadly things going on at the Lone Island. Even the workers who were employed on the island did not live there. They were transported on boats during the day and sent through the same boats at night. Plus, only around 70 people were part of the staff of Epstein's Island. This brings up the troubling question of whether the crimes happened after the workers had run their daily mill. Were the victims brought in at that time too? The details are a bit unclear, but what was revealed in the 2,000-page document was harrowing. The victims were recruited under false job descriptions and brought to the island without their consent. A huge supporter of Epstein behind all of the fiasco was Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell. The duo would target girls who were lacking family and friends and were struggling financially. They would then recruit such victims, train them, and then force them towards inappropriate acts. The victims were threatened by the couple into thinking that their careers would be ruined if they talked. So, the girls never came out in the media or reported anything to the police. At the same time, there were other victims who were called for a job as a masseuse but would be forced towards other disturbing acts. One girl, who was only 16 or 17 at the time, said that she did not have any massage experience but was recruited by Epstein. The legal proceedings suggested that around 33 women were interviewed and only two of them had any experience as a masseuse. Many victims claim that Maxwell was not only in charge of recruiting, but would also be part of the assaults. Once the victims were brought to the island, they would then be asked to bring in their friends and other young girls in exchange for money. The financially struggling girls were too young to understand their situation, agreed and started a chain reaction of victim recruitment. I was on my own and I need, needed help. I was only 17 years old. I was a little girl. As a result, Epstein would have hundreds of targets on his radar through his traumatized victims. One of Epstein's victims who was called a masseuse was Virginia Jeffrey. She was popular for filing a legal suit against Maxwell, but a settlement in favor of Jeffrey had concluded the legal proceedings. Maxwell had met her at Donald Trump's club where she was a spa attendant. She was introduced to Epstein and had been groomed to work with him later on. Jeffrey's testimony shed light on some important figures who visited the island. Her allegations were made public and people could not believe their ears when they heard about the names that popped up in the investigations. The legal proceedings on the Jeffrey Epstein case. The biggest name that popped up was Prince Andrew from the British royalty. There are reports that Jeffrey was paid $15,000 to engage in horrifying acts with the prince. In other reports, it is said that Jeffrey was told she would meet a prince, but had no idea that she would have to succumb to horrifying acts. Epstein had sent Jeffrey off to the prince, very well aware of what would happen, making him complicit in the act. The prince has widely disregarded the allegation and continues to deny even knowing Giuffre. I have no recollection of ever meeting this lady. But to support her claims, another victim came forward, Johanna Schoberg. She was a college student who was forced to become a massage therapist and coerced into terrifying acts with Epstein. She said she saw Giuffre in the New York mansion owned by Epstein where both the millionaire and the royal prince were present. The name of Alan Dershowitz, the renowned defense lawyer in New York, was also part of the same legal document that unveiled the names of many of Epstein's clients. The lawyer was faced with the allegations that he was involved in the abuse of a minor. A victim who did not reveal her name came forward against him, saying that he had abused her multiple times in several disclosed locations. 
from the plane to a mansion in New York, the details of his crime were disturbing. But that's not where the crimes of Alan Dershowitz come to a stop. Dershowitz was a friend and partner of Epstein and was also an eyewitness to other crimes being committed on the island. He did not utter a single word while dozens of victims suffered from shocking criminal acts. But when asked about his crimes, Dershowitz plainly denied the allegations. He claimed to have an innocent friendship with the millionaire and stressed on further investigation. Another name on the list was Jean-Luc Brunel, who was a French model scout. He was already under trial because of a charge involving underage girls. But he ended his life and died in jail before he could be charged with the crime. This person was not just allegedly involved in the heinous crimes against underage girls, but he was also a recruiter. Jeffrey claims that Maxwell would often send her to Brunel at different locations to be forced into various unspeakable acts. But he was more than just an associate. He worked just like Maxwell, but in France. He would scout girls for modeling and send them to Epstein as a way to extend his network of victims. The girls would then have their passports confiscated, as was the case of many international victims, and be forced to work with Epstein in his dark world. But if you think the list stops here, you are wrong. Bill Clinton and Donald Trump were two more names that popped up in the investigations. They were frequent visitors of the residence and would often fly in a helicopter to the mansion. But there is no allegation of them committing any crimes on the island. Bill Clinton denied having any information on the crimes disclosed to the public through Epstein's arrest and investigation. He said he had not talked to the millionaire for more than a decade. As for Donald Trump, he was known to be a big friend and partner of Epstein. But Trump reported later that he had a falling out with Epstein, and they did not talk anymore. Did he find out about Epstein's acts and decide to end his friendship with the tyrant? Did the politicians know about the crimes and choose to not report them? Only time may tell. Some other names include another unnamed prince, the former New Mexico governor Bill Richardson, former US Senator George Mitchell, Glenn Dubin, the former First Lady Hillary Clinton, and a millionaire hedge fund manager, among many others, who allegedly had connections with Epstein. Apart from the politicians, there were also names of celebrities that forced the fans to ponder if they were following the right people. From Leonardo DiCaprio to Naomi Campbell, Bruce Willis, Cameron Diaz, Kate Blanchett, Kevin Spacey, and many others, the list kept on going. Again, they are the names that were present in the thick legal document presented to the court. It is unclear whether they were involved in the acts, but their connections with the financier definitely leave a question mark. It is bone chilling to wonder how many people were involved in the terrifying crimes on Epstein Island. It served as a playground for the rich and powerful who thought they could get away with anything. Even if the allegations did not lead to criminally charged offenses, it is a small win for the victims who were able to speak against their abuser and bring to light the individuals who were involved in this incredibly extensive and shockingly intricate network of the elite. It is important to note that none of the names of the associates that popped up in the investigation have been criminally charged. The allegations were made, but they were never brought to trial. So, whether or not these people actually had something going on at Epstein Island remains a mystery. This is obviously, except for Epstein and Maxwell. Epstein might have died, but Maxwell went through a trial and lost in the legal proceedings. She was charged with 20 years in prison and charged with five different sex trafficking charges. It meant a victory for the victims who were served justice for the years-long abuse and suffering that they had received because of the sinister duo. But many also believe that just 20 years is not nearly enough for these crimes. That's all on the harrowing discoveries made on Epstein Island that sent shockwaves all over the world. The FBI raids further confirmed everyone's worst fears and forced the public to speak out against the millionaire. 
for a crime that went on for more than 30 years. It is baffling how no one had any clue what the elites were busy doing on the private island. And the shocking thing is that it was not just one person, but a whole network of more than 150 associates tied with Epstein. What do you think about these horrendous acts? Do you think there is truth behind the raids, or was it all a cover-up to hide more secrets? Are all the acts and the popular names out in public? Or is there more to this terrifying network that should be further investigated? Do share your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like icon and press the subscribe button. We will be coming up with more uploads and exciting videos for your feed. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.